There have been many Minecraft speedrun world records, but one of these runs is different from the others. Had this runner not loaded into this seed on April 19th, 2021 and got some of the most unfathomably insane RNG ever seen, Minecraft speedrunning history would look dramatically different. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me set the scene. When Minecraft version 1.16 was released, it redefined what a luck-based speedrun meant. If a runner loads into a world, they might just stumble upon the greatest seed ever, but more realistically, they're gonna spawn in a random biome that'll make a competitive time impossible. While this is true for every version, this one in particular took things to the next level. Regardless of which strategy is used, the speedrun is overwhelmingly reliant on luck. And this is precisely what turned the 1.16 random seed glitchless category into such a phenomenon. It didn't matter if you were the greatest player ever or nowhere close. When the version was released and everybody had the same level of knowledge, anybody could get a good time with enough luck. We got to see the best players exploring new strategies and demonstrating their ability to improvise. And as a result, the world record was getting lowered left and right. The first top times featured runners entering the nether in around 5 minutes, then mining nether gold ore to trade with piglins in hopes of getting at least 2 ender pearl piglin trades. From there, they'd go get blaze rods at a fortress, exit the nether, trek all the way to the stronghold, then slowly but surely kill the ender dragon. Later down the road, this route became known as classic strats. The first major change came when Dmax used a completable ruined portal to exit the nether as opposed to the one he entered with, and in turn cut down about 90% of the travel part and destroyed the previous record. But this run was also kind of seen as a fluke, not an easily replicable strategy. The final improvement with so-called classic strats happened when Corbanos basically hit the jackpot with Ender Pearl RNG, Blaze Rod drops, and a great seed, resulting in the biggest world record time drop in the category's history. When this run happened, it truly felt like he'd made an enormous, near insurmountable breakthrough with a run that would stand on top for a while. In order to beat Hormano's time, one must get even luckier, and in order to do that, they'd need to reset so aggressively it would take months, if not years, to see a new record. Well, at least that was the general consensus for about a month, before Curryway set a record that showed how by using a bastion, it was possible to consistently have enough obsidian to build a new portal, by exiting the nether from a random point in the first stronghold ring. Runners could be anywhere, from inside of the stronghold to super far away, thus adding a new element of excitement to the run. This became known as blind traveling, and while Curryway's time stood for a few months, soon enough, the dominoes began toppling. First, it was Rain X, who managed to get super close to the stronghold upon exiting the nether, but not long after, Illumina showed that even with unlucky proximity, full ocean travel along with an ocean exposed portal room could more than make up for lost time. One day after that run, Two Letter Name managed to drop a few seconds off Illumina's time. However, the very next day, he lowered the record by almost two minutes, with a much more optimized run on a great seed. A few weeks later, FE666 pulled one of the most insane seeds ever, and even with a major time loss from forgetting to grab flint, an excellent blind travel was still enough to shave down another 20 seconds. A few days later, however, the Sizzler got a great seed with good RNG, and with minimal mistakes, he was able to cut down the record to 11 minutes and 7 seconds, an insane 3 minute time improvement from what Rainex got less than 2 months prior. This was an insane period of time for the 1.16 random seed glitchless category. Everybody knew that a sub 10 minute world record would take something extraordinary, but as runners started rapidly approaching that barrier, excitement around the idea grew. There was mass speculation around which runner would be the first to do it, but people knew that shaving an entire minute off a very optimized time is no easy feat. I think it's safe to say, nobody would have guessed that only one month after the Sizzler's world record, a streamer with two viewers would change the trajectory of the 1.16 RSG category forever.
April 19th, 2021. Exactly 301 days after the update was released, a runner named Brentilda completed, far and away, the most legendary run seen thus far in Minecraft speedrun history. The nether entry was relatively slow, with a time of 2.53, but an immediate bastion and fortress, coupled with a bone in the 00 chunk, instantly showed the immense potential of this seed. Essentially, every required nether resource was right next to his portal, and the 00 bone gave him a general idea at where he should build his exit portal to get close to the stronghold. At the Bastion, Obsidian quickly filled Brentilda's inventory, and he was able to get every other nether resource very efficiently, so it was time to head over to the fortress. Due to the soul sand biome, there were many blaze spawns, and with solid drop rates, he had everything he needed to leave the nether at around 7 minutes. It's at this point when Brentilda did something pretty controversial. He paused for an extended period of time. You see, the bone does have a correlation to where the stronghold will be, but unless a speedrunner wants to memorize 48 sets of coordinates, they need to reference a chart, one that Brentilda didn't immediately have on hand when he needed it. Big streamers will just have their chat spam the right coordinates, which was a luxury not afforded to Brentilda during this run. But once he got them, he unpaused and went exactly where the chart told him to go. Dude. Exiting the nether at 8.06 is far from exceptional. At this point, runners had done so in under 7 minutes. But finding yourself inside the stronghold right next to the portal room is unbelievably lucky. I can't pause. Dude. Dude. <laughs> what? 9 minutes and 36 seconds, a once theoretical milestone had just happened. Remember when everybody thought Corbanos had killed the category with a perfect run? Well, Brentilda just killed the category with a shockingly imperfect speedrun. Nobody else had even gotten a time under 11 minutes, and he had a sub 10 after entering the nether at nearly 3 minutes. It was absolutely groundbreaking, but nobody truly knew what the impact of this run would be. Following the completion of the greatest Minecraft speedrun ever, Brentilda never really capitalized off the publicity. He didn't want the attention. In fact, he was so contempt with his time that he never speedran 1.16 RSG after that day, which I think says a lot about the category. But the reaction from everyone else was dramatically different. The very first video on this channel that blew up was titled, FE666, the Minecraft speedrunner who is loading into the next seed before you finish reading this title, and it's about a runner who is exceptionally determined to get a world record. If you remember, FE once held this title with his 11.50 time, but once it was broken, and especially after Brintilda's run, he kicked things into high gear. FE666's pace of resetting runs was unlike anything seen prior. About four-fifths of the seeds he loaded into were insta-resets, and only around 1 in 20 entered the nether at an average pace of 242. From here, a minuscule 1 in 500 runs would make it to the second structure in the nether, and 1 in 1000 would feature him crafting Eyes of Ender. In 35,000 tracked resets since achieving his world record, he entered the stronghold 5 times, with an average pace of 1013, and out of those, the end dimension was only reached once. At the time of making that video, FE666 had been streaming 1.16 random sea glitchless runs for 44% of the last month, an unprecedented time investment, and the best run he ever got during that insane grind ended right in front of the end portal at 9 minutes and 10 seconds because one of his eyes of ender broke. This was not even world record pace, but it was one of the fastest paces anybody had ever been on. It was clear that if runners wanted to get serious about beating Brentilda, something needed to change. Around June of 2021, less than two months after the sub-10, many streamers began using a strategy called multi-instancing. Basically, if it's inefficient to reset seeds one at a time, why not play on several instances of Minecraft in order to decrease downtime between runs? This was a real game changer. If runners could reset seeds quicker, they'd have a higher chance of running into good seeds, and in turn, getting good times. 
The strategy was immediately adopted by all of the top runners, but just as it helped to solve one problem, it created another. Simply, you need a good CPU to be able to run multiple instances of Minecraft at once, and a good CPU costs a lot of money. During the period of time where everyone was using one instance, nobody got even remotely close to beating Brantilda, making multi-instance a natural development. But was it a positive development? Long gone were the days where any speedrunner could load into a Minecraft world and have a chance at a record. The only way to have a reasonable shot required expensive hardware for extensive resetting. This was a debate that divided the community. Those with a nice PC started adopting the strategy, but many who couldn't afford such a luxury advocated strongly to ban it. In the end, the quest for progress was stronger than the quest for fairness. Multi-instancing was quickly being adopted by anybody who had a good enough CPU, but the grind to beat Brent Hilda was far from over. On August 26th, four months after the run, Illumina found himself entering the end ahead of Brentilda's pace. If he just got a lucky dragon perch, the record would be his, but instead, he watched the dragon fly around the end for three minutes before it finally cooperated, then finished with a time barely under 11 minutes. This was basically the first glimmer of hope that a faster time was on the horizon, but also around this point, a certain debate began popping up. In a 1.16 RSG speedrun, if the player can obtain 20 obsidian from a bastion, they can exit the nether, triangulate where the stronghold is, go back into the nether, and build another portal in hopes of going straight into the structure. This is called calculated travel, and essentially, runners could do what Brentilda did, but without having to get ridiculously lucky. If you remember from earlier, the world record featured a lot of pausing, 1 minute and 33 seconds to be exact, and while some of that was very reasonable, namely pulling up the chart, Brentilda spent a good amount of time paused due to nerves after he found himself right next to the portal room. In order to negate hardware differences, Minecraft speedruns are timed with in-game time as opposed to real time, which doesn't count the pauses, so it was still a world record, but this sparked a near immediate rule change, which basically stated that pausing for extended periods of time is not allowed. The reason this pause rule is relevant is because calculating the location of the stronghold is quite difficult and requires doing math under time constraints. However, by using a stronghold calculator, this aspect of the run would be made near automatic with an external program known as NinjaBrain Bot. In the beginning of 2021, the community voted to ban calculators in a poll, with both sides of the argument clearly laid out, but the dilemma was far from straightforward. One argument in favor of allowing them read, calculators remove an RNG factor from the run. While having to manage eyes to make sure you don't lose too many is an interesting part of the run to many people, the fact that you can occasionally, simply, get screwed over by it if you get extremely unlucky is certainly bad. In the anti-calculator section, one of the arguments basically states the exact same thing. Calculators remove parts of the run that people like. It was at this point when I began to realize that the entire debate was essentially summed up in the final sentence. There was almost unanimous consent from all top-level runners that calculators are bad. The majority felt that if stronghold calculators were allowed and the skill ceiling was lowered, that was not in the spirit of speedrunning. But that was three and a half months before Brentilda's run. Only seven months after it, the mod team held another poll, and this time, the result was 58% on ban, 41% ban, with top runners being especially in favor of an unban. It took just over half a year of nobody getting within 50 seconds of Brentilda's time for the community to dramatically change its mind. Part of the reason was due to a weird gray area with what was and wasn't considered a calculator, but also, by just looking at the shift in the meta, it's clear why people's perspectives change so much. If a player truly aspired to beat Brentilda with a bad CPU, they must either go through single instance hell or upgrade their CPU in order to go through multi-instance hell. The only difference is that when multi-instancing, the runner at least has a modicum of a chance at pulling a god seed, getting good RNG, and not choking, but I haven't even talked about level 3. A good CPU can handle 4 instances with no problem, but a really good CPU can run 9 or even 16, and with that many, all the runner has to do is glance at the first frame, decide if they like what they see, and if the answer is no, reset the seed. 
Many runners were hungry for progress, investing huge amounts of time, energy, and CPU into the grind, and the stars were just never aligning for that sub Brentilda. The results from the second poll were reflective of how the community felt toward the strive for progress. 1.16 RSG is a relentless maze of RNG, and a tool that could help navigate that was just the thing many people wanted. January 22nd, 2022, 279 days after his run, at 12.58pm PST, Brentilda said in the Minecraft speedrunning Discord server, flip it, somebody is gonna get sub 10 in the next 24 hours. At this point, not a single person other than Brentilda had achieved that milestone, but just 9 hours after sending that message, Cube1337X completed a run with a final time of 9.08. Of course, the time to beat has since dropped considerably with the world record exchanging hands a few times, but the impact Brentilda's run had on the future of Minecraft speedrunning cannot go understated. We're now several years removed from all of this. The world record is approaching the 7 minute barrier, and every record starting with cubes has featured multi instancing and calculators. Brentilda's run was so far ahead of its time that it expedited the implementation of several strategies that forever changed the category.